This spring, the Confucius Institute at MTSU presented the Shaman University Student Art Group Spring Gala. The event consisted of musical and dance performances of traditional Chinese art forms. Shaman University is located in the Fujian province of China in the southeastern coastal region of the country. This talented troupe consists of a choir, a dancing team, musicians, martial artists, and painters. The group's repertoire also includes Fujian puppetry and ethnic song and dance from the Yunnan, Tibet, and Xinjiang regions of China. Participants in the art group include both undergraduate and graduate students chosen by each individual school and college at the university. Along with their performance at MTSU, the Shaman University Student Art Group performed for students at John Pittard Elementary School, further spreading cultural awareness to the Murfreesboro community. This spring, nearly 250 youngsters in grades 6 through 12 exhibited their work in the National History Day District Competition held at MTSU. The event, hosted by MTSU's College of Liberal Arts and Department of History, provided the university with the opportunity to open its doors to potential scholars of the future, and it offered these young people a forum to display their passion for history. Contest entries fell into five categories, documentary, website, a paper, an exhibit, and performance. The general theme for the competition was debate and diplomacy. We originally started out um, based on the Scopes, uh, the Scopes Monkey Trial, but when we searched more on the National History Day project, we saw that a lot of people were doing that, so we um, widened our uh, project's topic to creationism versus evolution. Our topic is about drinking age. Should it say or should it go to 18 or 25 or say 21? And we came up, our group came up with it should stay at 21. Be, should stay at 21 <laughs> because um, 20, 18 you're too, you're too irresponsible to handle alcohol and um, 25 I think if we if anyone put it up to 25 there'd be a riot. People would not like it being at 25. This is my exhibit. <laughs> it's about the atomic bomb and its influence on diplomacy and how it was used and all the and some of the debate surrounding it. I did a paper on the history of suffrage and how it was a really debatable subject about how like through the years there was all these amendments that were passed that were really controversial. Five special awards were presented to students whose work revolved around women's history, history of the Middle East, African American history, history of the Holocaust, and the history of science. District winners advanced to the state competition held in early April in Nashville. First and second place winners will go to the national competition in June at the University of Maryland. Awesome Aquifiers, Battery Buggy, Junkyard Challenge, Microbe Mission, Sounds of Music, Disease Detectives, Mousetrap Vehicle, Sumo Bots. These are just a few of the challenging competitions that more than 400 middle and high school students competed in 
at the annual Science Olympiad. In this challenge, students are bringing in household items to build either a bridge, a freestanding tower, or an arch. The students, when they come in, they have three possible choices of uh, what they can build, but th they don't know until we actually they get in and we tell them, you must build either A, B, or C. At that time, the students begin construction. They have half an hour to build, and at the end, they must support a ball and a cup for at least five seconds. Students from Rutherford, Davidson, Williamson, Murray, and Hamilton counties came to MTSU for the competition. I'm Jacob Learned from Laverne High School. I've been doing uh, the Science Olympiad for two years. The optics was uh, interesting because it had a lot to do with physics, and I know we were going to do some optics towards the end of the year in physics, so I kind of wanted to get a heads up on that in a way. Uh, the calculations were a little bit more in-depth than uh, I thought they were going to be. There were about 20 pages of notes that I went over. So what makes these competitions different from traditional classroom learning? Yeah. Uh, my name is Jordan Kirby. I'm from Spring Hill High School, and this is a mousetrap vehicle. The object is to use this to wind a string, which will pull the axle, and then you try to keep it as straight as possible while pushing a cup. You want to go three meters forwards and then trigger it to stop and start going backwards to go seven meters back as quickly as possible. Um, we used just some CDs for some wheels, got just some axles, and you use two mouse traps, and that's the only means of power you have. And then this part right here is where you measure how far it went, and you have it, try and have it as close to the destination as possible. In short, the students are applying theoretical knowledge to hands-on problems, and at all times, the clock is running. Numerous MTSU faculty members and students from many campus disciplines served as coordinators of all 23 events. My name is Ashley Fuquay, and I'm a student at MTSU, majoring in interdisciplinary studies, K through six. Uh, I'm one of the student volunteers. I actually volunteered through the MTEACH program, and I was placed in optics. In the optics round, you have a big wooden box. In that box, you have a target point that you have to reach. Now in the high school realm they have they have an object in the way to obstruct the path of the laser. And what you're supposed to use is take two mirrors and have that diffract the laser and hit the target. This is a physical science competition. Uh, throughout, the, throughout the day, they're going to be uh, dealing with all aspects of science, physical science, life science, chemistry, it just varies on the event. Okay. It just, science is a pathway that most scholarships are offered, and yes. kind of the okay. most underused scholarship funds. The top five schools in each division will advance to the State Science Olympiad in Knoxville. With the increased emphasis on science, math, and technology in Tennessee and throughout the nation, the MTSU Science Olympiad is a tried and tested formula that leads to discovery, innovation, and achievement.
We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. Well, hi, we're back with more of Out of the Blue. I'm Bob Pondillo, professor of uh, media and culture at MassCom College here at Middle Tennessee State. And we have a special guest today, Kathy Demeter is here. Kathy is the coordinator of University College, the Adult Degree Completion Program. That is correct. And I want to find out more about that, Kathy. Th th does this mean that those who wish to complete their degrees and have a little college ahead of time may do that now? Or? Exactly. The degree was designed for predominantly working adults who have had some college right. that dropped out, stopped out for whatever reason. Life right. got in their way. Sure. And sure. so they've got some college credit, but they haven't finished a degree. So we designed a couple of degrees so that they can use hopefully the majority of that credit right. and then complete their degree. And it's available 100% online. No kidding. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Now, that's always the big problem, though. If you went to school, say, 10, 12 years ago, and then life got in your way, uh, and you do have some credits, maybe some of them won't transfer, some of them won't work anymore. Is that true, or have you fixed that up somehow? <laughs> if it's an accredited school that they got right. your college credit from, right. I would say 80 to 90, 80 to 100 percent of those credits should transfer wow. in. As a matter of fact, we just had a gentleman graduate back at the end of the summer. Uh -huh. He was 80 or 80 plus. He, years old? Yes, yes. And, uh, Great. <laughs> He had some of his credits from 30, 40 years ago, and we were able to use those. So, yes. Wow, the, that's outstanding. The that's use great. of the credit does not age out. Okay, because that, usually that's a lot yeah, of things that, that is sort issue. of stands in your way there. So, it's, uh, is it all online then, or can you come and take uh, classes, or you sit in the classroom and view the professor and talk to him? Whatever? You really have the option. We have oh. two different degrees that we offer. One is a Bachelor of Science in Liberal Studies, mm -hmm. and... It's literally what the name implies. We're liberal in what we let you study. Mm -hmm. You get to design your major. Okay. okay. You select two areas that you're interested in, and mm -hmm. then you design your major around that. Mm -hmm. The other major is a Bachelor of Science in Professional Studies, and that one you can get a concentration in organizational leadership, mm -hmm. information technology, or healthcare administration. Super. So... If you want those degrees, you can get them 100% online. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to get the liberal studies degree, not every course that you could possibly pull into that degree is mm -hmm. available online. Sure. So you have the option of attending classes or doing the work right. online. I think it's great. So some people, you know, like uh, to think. I mean, they, they really enjoy... Uh, philosophy and thinking about religious ideas or f philosophical ideas or uh, literature or whatever, uh, which is great. Um, you know, some would say, well, practical application, maybe not, but personal fulfillment, very important. It really helps that. Then there's the other side who say, eh, more interested in practical stuff. Exactly. And, and so you've got that taken care of on both sides. We really do. And, and I do a lot of marketing of the degree, mm -hmm. so I talk to adults. And they always say, well, what is this liberal studies degree? They, they understand the professional one where mm -hmm. we give them different concentrations. Right. The liberal studies, they don't normally understand, so I have to explain it to them. Right. Well, if they're a working adult, I say, okay, what kind of work do you do? And let's pull in courses that impact either what you're currently doing mm -hmm. or what your aspirations are. Mm -hmm. So that allows them to design the degree. That's great. That's yeah. awesome that you've thought about the whole thing, which, which is 
Uh, great. Uh, so, and this is in place right now. Oh yes, so, yes. We have a number of a number of students. How and many do you have? Don't ask me that question because okay. I, I was thinking I don't know the exact number. But there more are several, than two. There are several hundred in the degree program. Oh, wow. Yes. Well, that's great. And it is increasingly popular. Now, there's a couple of other aspects of the degree. Mm -hmm. uh, not only will we use old credit, mm -hmm. if an individual has military credit, that can be pulled into to the degree program. And these two degrees will allow students to earn credit from what we call prior adult learning. Okay. Now, is there, a, because a lot of people talk about, can I get credit for life experience, life, my, because I've lived to be mm -hmm. 60 years old or whatever, 50 years old, um, can they? Is there, is there a way to come and take a test or something? To Well, there are certainly ways you can earn credit for things you have learned by taking a test. Okay, you, all right. You, you can clep out of a course that's a college level exam right. where you take an exam. If you make a passing score, sure. you'll get credit for that course. You can challenge courses at MTSU. So if you have studied or learned content that is similar to a course, mm -hmm. you can come in and challenge that course and say, I think I know that material, sure. let me take a test. Sure. What we offer is what we call prior adult learning. So if you have worked in a job for five or more years, or if you've gone to training programs, if you've gotten certifications, licenses, then we have you come through an online course. You pull together a portfolio of all that prior adult learning, do the research to find the college credit equivalent of that learning, okay. and it goes before a review board and is, hopefully if you've done it right, approved for college credit. So you can earn up to 30 hours of credit from your prior learning. Wow, 30 hours, that's like two semesters, mm -hmm. approximately. That's a yeah. fourth of your degree. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Now, is this an expensive proposition, or how does it work? Is it, uh, can no. you even talk about that? Oh, yeah, okay. you, you take one three-hour course. It's mm -hmm. an upper division level course. Mm -hmm. Again, it's an online course. You take that course. I instruct it. There's another individual who instructs it, and we got our students through pulling that portfolio together. Hmm. Wow. So, for example, if you've got a real estate license. I don't, but you, okay. <laughs> but you I'd document do. <laughs> that. You prove that you have completed that licensing process, uh -huh. and that equates to so much college credit. Okay, okay. If you've done a certified professional secretary, that equates to so much college credit. Hmm. So... I think um, it's great. It is. What a, what a wonderful, and how long have we been doing this here? I, there are th this university is so big, I have not a clue some of the stuff that's going on around here. So how long is it? A, is it a, Two or three years So now. it's a relatively new uh, it, It's relatively program. new. I think we're in about, oh, the seventh, eighth, ninth semester. Okay. And successful. People Very are, people are doing successful. well with it. Yes. Things are looking good. If, if there's folks out there watching that would like to get in touch or learn more about this, do they contact you or what, what do you, uh, what's they the best They can thing? go to www.mtsuanytime.com. Anytime, www.mtsuanytime.com. It's right, mtsuanytime.com. Well, it's on the screen, right? <laughs> that's, that's the one you should look at. Yes. Don't pay attention to me. Well, that's great. I mean, it sounds like a great opportunity for somebody that, that wants to uh, either get back uh, to, to sort of enhance what they already have, their, their, their working environment, what have you, or just learn more things and, you know, just feel like you've done something that you wanted to do all your life and you've finally done it. Right. And, and one of the things that we offer is if somebody is interested in that program, mm -hmm. if they will contact us through that website, they mm -hmm. fill out a form, we will do an unofficial transcript evaluation and let them know before they commit to the program about how much college credit it's going to take to finish. That's awesome. Well, so. it's, it's, I tell you, it's worth looking into for a lot of folks out mm -hmm. there who are interested in this. And this is a great undergraduate college. I, I, I work university. I can't uh, stress that more. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Kathy Demeter, who is the coordinator of University College Adult Degree Completion Programs here at MTSU. And will be more, well, there will be more in just a moment. Stay with us. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. 
For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. This is not just a recording studio. This is not just a flight school. This is not just a university. This is MTSU, home of Tennessee's best. The MTSU Mineral, Gem, and Fossil Museum serves as both a teaching lab for earth science classes and a learning experience for the general public. Most visitors from outside of the university are school groups from the third, fourth, and fifth grades. We, we get uh, homeschool groups coming fairly often. Uh, we get some of the elementary schools in the area coming. Um, we've had one school, College Grove School, has come every year uh, since we've opened. Kids love the dinosaur. It's been a big hit since we put it in. And you always, I mean, you can see they're crawling all over the thing. The, uh, the Allosaurus is only about one third of what a full size one would be. Well, it all started with really two things. Um, there was a family, um, Ernest and Onsby Hammonds, and they lived kind of in southern middle Tennessee and they were fossil collectors and they collected their whole life and then once they got elderly and were no longer collecting anymore they wanted to share their fossil collection and so they donated the whole fossil collection to the geoscience department at MTSU with the condition that it has to be on display and shared with the public and so we had some of the stuff on display in the department and along the hallways where we usually teach the classrooms and stuff. Then um, Dr. Ogden, one of the professors here, who has a pretty extensive mineral collection, got together with uh, another retired faculty, Dr. Bordine, and they came up with the idea of creating their own museum based on, initially, the Hammonds fossil collection and Dr. Ogden's mineral collection. And that's kind of how it got started and they, were, they gave us this room to put the museum in. And when it first opened, it had pretty much that, the Hammonds collection and Dr. Ogden's mineral collection. And there is a gem and mineral society here in middle, in Murfreesboro. And the gem and mineral society loaned us a lot of stuff to put on display too. The museum is open to the public on Saturdays from 1 to 5 p.m. and admission is free. With samples from every state in our country and from over 50 countries, the museum is a must-see for any aspiring geologist. There are scavenger hunts available for children, so ensure a visit to this hidden jewel at MTSU.
Throughout the year, the MTSU community is privileged to have distinguished guests come to campus to speak to students and faculty. The university culture is constantly enriched with a steady diet of diverse insights, thought-provoking perspectives, and challenging ideas. During March, the campus welcomed world-renowned banjoist Bella Fleck, who performed for an appreciative audience and told of his journey to Africa to explore the little-known African roots of the banjo. When I grew up in New York City, I had no tie to the banjo, no tie to folk music, no tie to the South, nothing like that. But that sound was just one of those things, you know, turning points in my life. Social psychologist Dr. Gary Namey, nationally known expert on the subject of bullying, met with three classes during the day, then addressed a larger audience later in the evening. Namey lobbies around the country for more stringent anti-bullying laws. And in its most severe and egregious forms, it is abusive. Uh, over-the-top health-harming violence. For those old enough to remember the turbulent 60s and 70s, the name Angela Davis evokes a full spectrum of emotions. The social activist, author, and lecturer delivered the keynote address to a packed house during MTSU's National Women's History Month. It was 1913 when a committee of faculty and students chose blue and white as the school colors. One of the students on that committee, by the way, was Q. M. Smith, who would later become president of MTSC from 1938 to 1958. In the early years, the athletic teams had no official nickname. Sports teams played under the name of teachers, normals, normalites, even the pedagogues alluding to the school's function as a state teacher's college. The current nickname came about in 1934 as the result of a contest in the Daily News Journal. A football player, Charles Sarver, won $5 with his winning entry, Blue Raiders. Sarver said he had borrowed the name from Colgate University, whose team was known as the Red Raiders at that time. It took a while to figure out how to represent the Blue Raiders, and for a time the school's mascot was a student dressed as Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest. By the late 1960s, however, it was apparent that such an image was offensive to many people. That controversial figure was dropped in favor of an unofficial mascot, a blue tick hound, known affectionately as Old Blue. In 1996, there was a call for a new mascot to reflect the university's upgrade to Division 1A football. In January 1998, Lightning was introduced to fans during a basketball halftime. Charles Sarver was there to join the celebration. Join us in celebrating 100 years of MTSU history. Check out the Centennial Timeline at mtsu.edu slash centennial.